In this video, you're going to learn how to create interactive selection sets using ArcGIS Pro. The tools that you're going to use for interactive selection will be found on your map tab. On the map tab, under the selection grouping, you'll see several tools here. If you click the drop down arrow, you'll see the full set of tools, including rectangle, polygon, lasso, circle, line, and phrase. There are some additional uh, tools down here at the bottom that are grayed out. Those are three-dimensional selection tools. And uh, what we're doing right now is visualizing a two-dimensional map. So they're gonna be great out at this point. So these are your interactive selection tools. Um, in addition to what you see here, you can also uh, select features uh, one by one by simply clicking a point on a feature as well. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So those are the tools themselves. Of course, uh, you'll need to have a map open to be able to see this map tab and the selection tools, but kind of goes without saying. Um, so the first thing you want to do uh, to create a selection set is to go to your contents pane. On the contents pane, there's a list by selection button. And if you click that, what it'll do is it'll present you with a list of all the layers that have been added to the currently active map. So my active map right now is City of New Braunfels, and these are the layers that are associated with that map. All you're going to do here is simply click the check boxes next to the layers that you want to make selectable. And all you're doing here is you're marking a layer for the ability to create a selection set. So for this particular example, uh, the only layer that I have marked is city parcel. So because that's the only layer that's been marked as selectable, it will not be possible at this time to create a selection set on any of the other layers. So you have full control over this, uh, over what layers are going to be selected at any given time. So from there, um, again, we'll use our interactive selection tools. The first interactive selection tool we'll show you is just simply clicking a point on the map. And so by clicking a point on the map, and all you're doing here is just sim simply clicking any in individual features. So we're focusing in here, in here on city parcels at this point. So if I simply click on a parcel, you'll notice that it creates a selected feature. Um, and the number of selected features will show up in your contents pane your list by selection out to the right hand side of your layer, you'll always have an indicator as to how many features are currently selected, right? Which right now is just one. All right, so that's using a point to interactively select a feature. Now, if you hold your shift key down, you can interactively select additional features just by clicking. So, what I've done right now is I'm holding the shift key down on my keyboard and simply clicking additional features. And what that does is it adds to the current selection set. So, that right now I have for selected features. If you want to unselect a feature, you can use the control key on your keyboard. So right now I'm gonna hold the control key down and then I'll click a feature that has already been selected and it deselects that feature. So you hold shift key down to select more than one feature, hold the control key down and interactively select to deselect a feature. So that's using a point, right? And that's just kind of the default behavior uh, for your selection tools. I'm going to go ahead and clear this selection set. And, and by the way, your selection sets will always show up with a different symbology. So you'll always have that uh, kind of light blue outline color and fill uh, for your selected features. Uh, there is a clear tool here that I'll use to clear the selection set. And the next thing we'll show you here is uh, select by rectangle. So what select rec by rectangle will do is you're going to draw a rectangle on the screen and the default behavior is to select any features from selectable layers that intersect that geometry, in this case, a rectangle. So if I draw a rectangle, uh, what's gonna happen is when I release the drawing of the rectangle, when I release this with my mouse, any of the parcels that intersect that rectangle will become part of the selection set. And by, by intersect, we mean any features or any parcels in this case that touch the rectangle or are completely within the rectangle. So if I release the rectangle at this point, this is the result I'll get. Again, all we're doing here is just drawing a rectangle. Any features that either touch the boundaries of that rectangle or are completely within that rectangle become part of the selection set. That's the default behavior. Now you can change this. If you go to the project options dialog box under selection, um, under interactive selection mode, the default is going to be partially within. The other option here is wholly within. So if you select wholly within, okay that and go back to your map. Now when you draw a rectangle, in order for a, a feature to become part of the selection set, 
it has to be completely within that rectangle. So in other words, if a parcel simply touches the boundaries of that rectangle, it will not be included in the selection set. Only the parcels that are completely within this rectangle become part of the selection set. So you can kind of see the result from that. So it restricts what gets selected. Again, that's on the project options dialog box, and I'm going to change it back to partially within because that's the default. Uh, now the other tools work the same. So if I work, you know, they work the same way. So if you select, for example, polygon, all you're doing here is you're clicking vertices or points to define your polygon and any features that either touch or are completely within become part of the, the solution. So these all work you know, pretty much the same way. Again, there's your list of number of selected records. Uh, if you use the rectangle or polygon or any of the other tools, you still have access to the control keys and the shift keys. So again, let me just kind of show you how this works. So if I go to rectangle, raw rectangle, I get my initial selection set, but if I hold the shift key down, which is what I'm going to do now, and draw another rectangle, then we add to the current selection set. And if you hit control, hold down the control key, draw a rectangle, then it deselects from your current selection set. So all these tools, again, work pretty much the same way. Right? All you're doing is you know, drawing in some type of geometry, create your selection set. Now, once you've got your selection set, um, there, you know, there are different things you can do. Right? It, you're, you're rarely creating a selection set as the end result. Right? A selection set is usually just part of a larger geoprocessing workflow. So you know, you're typically doing something with this selection set. Right? You're either doing some analysis on those selected features, you're exporting the records, um, you know, th those are, are typical types of things that you might want to do. Um, so a very common type of thing to do would be to export your selected features to a new layer. It's very easy to do this. You simply right click on the layer that has the selection set. And under data, you've got export features and export table. Um, export features will export to a new feature class or shapefile, both the features and the attributes that are currently selected. If you select export table, what it will do is export only the tabular information from your selected record. So it won't export any of the feature geometry associated with that. So that's, that's very common that you might want to do something like that. Now you could also go to selection and under selection, you have a number of tools here. You can zoom to the selection set, and does the same thing in this case. Clear your selection set, um, other things you can do here as well. Uh, you could also make a layer from the selected features. What this will do is it will add a new layer to your table of contents, and the only features that'll be part of that uh, new layer that gets added to the table of contents will be the currently selected records. This is what we call a selection layer. Uh, a selection layer is meant as a temporary type of structure so it's not going to be most of the time it's not uh, going to become part not going to become a persistent layer that you're that you're saving either to a geodatabase or to a shapefile. It's meant as an intermediate step, right? A temporary data set that's going to facilitate something else that you're going to do as part of a larger geoprocessing workflow. So if I select make layer from selected features, you'll notice that you now have a new layer called city parcel selection. And if I turn all these other things off. You can see now I still have those selected features as a new layer, in this case called city parcel selection. But it, this is not meant to be a permanent layer that you're saving out, right? It's meant to facilitate some larger workflow where you're going to then take that selected set of records and do some analysis or you know, maybe export it in some other, other manner. Usually you're going to do, be doing some type of analysis um, on that selected now you could make this a permanent uh, layer by right-clicking and selecting data, export features, but the intent of a selection layer is, is a very temporary type of thing. So typically you would simply remove that and then the layer goes away. And you still have access to all the, uh, the regular things in there. Uh, now you might also want to view the attributes of your selected records, and you can do that uh, by a couple of different ways, right? You could right-click the layer that has selected features and then open the attribute table that'll do is take you into table view mode and uh, again, down at the bottom of your table view mode, you can see how many records are currently selected. Uh, you can switch over to showing only the selected records so that what you're seeing now in your table view 
are only the selected records that are currently in the map. You can also get to the attribute information uh, in a little bit different manner by going to the attributes button. And what that'll do is bring up the attribute pane. This is typically used for, um, for editing. So for situations where you're wanting to create a selection set for the purpose of editing the attributes of those selected records, you would typically use this attributes pane. And so what you're seeing here is a listing of all the features that are currently selected. And you can see when I click on these, it highlights them briefly in the map. And so a typical workflow here would be that you're wanting to update the attributes of these features. Right? So if you're wanting to, for example, update the ownership information, you just simply come down here, double click on it, and then type in some new value to update the records. So typically you'd use that attribute pane to update the attributes uh, for one or more features. And so, so again, you're creating selection sets with uh, not as an end goal, but as part of a larger workflow where you're going to be editing selected features or exporting out the selected features to a new data set, or you're going to be doing some type of analysis on that selection set. And that's about it. Um, I'm going to discard that. So uh, just to just a kind of a quick recap, what we've shown you in uh, this video is how to use the interactive selection tools. Uh, in future demonstrations, we'll be going through some of the additional tools like select by attributes and select by location, which are alternative ways of creating selection sets uh, for more complex type scenarios. That's it for this.